call the general purposes committee meeting to order. Uh, we still have a councilor Day and Wolf who we have not seen, but I assume that they will be in. Uh, oh, there's councilor Wolf. I see. So uh, I am. I don't think we've seen councilor Day as yet, but we'll see. I'm sure she'll be in in a minute. All right, I'll, I'll call it to order. Uh, may I have a motion on the minutes? Moved and seconded. Moved. Any errors or omissions? All those in favor? Any opposed? Aye. That's carried. Um, then we have, uh, for the first one, servicing agreement for development on number six road. Uh, to staff, anything to add to your report? Mr. Chair, nothing further to add to the report. All right, ma'am. The recommendation. Moved and seconded. Any discussion, comments? All those in favor? Any opposed? Aye. That is carried. Uh, then we have the two liquor license applications. Uh, now, there is a delegation on this, uh, but uh, let's go to uh, Carly Williams first. Is there anything, let's take number two. Is there anything to add to your report, Carly? Thank you. Um, there was nothing to add to the report, but I did want to mention to the committee um, that the a representative of the applicant is here just to answer questions, uh, not to necessarily delegate, just to help answer any of the committee's questions. And also just wanted to point out that these are two separate applications, but they have similar names, so that might be confusing, but they're two separate businesses uh, to be considered, both um, uh, food primary licenses to be considered by the committee today. All right. On either one of these two or three, does anybody have uh, questions for the delegation, which is uh, uh, Bert Hicks, who we have talked to him before on uh, these kind of license applications. Anybody got any questions? Okay, I'm Move not... the first one. So that's number two. So that's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on it? All those in favor? Those Aye. opposed? That is carried. And then on number Move the second th application. Yeah, which is number three, so that's moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, any opposed? Aye. That is carried. Uh, then we have number four, uh, the, the FCM, the application Garden City Land Soil Management or Remediation Study uh, to staff. Uh, Alex Kernicki or others, anything to add to your report? Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. No, I have nothing further to add, and I'm available to answer any questions. All right. Hi, uh, I'm trying to get into a meeting. Can you help me? I'm sorry? Who, who's, who's, You're in the meeting. You. We can see you, Carol. Okay. I can't get my iPad to work. Sorry. We hear Carol, you loud and clear. We can hear you, and we can see you. I, okay. But can I, you... I can only hear you if I pick you up, so I don't know what to do. Um, it's normally I just push on the button and I come right into the city, and for some reason it's not working today. It says uh, it's connecting, but then apparently I have to be waiting for others to join. And Just a minute. Uh, Claudia, is there something we should be admitting her to the meeting? Okay, so the suggestion is for you to exit the meeting and come back in. Okay, thank you so much, sorry, thank okay. you. Okay, so I've got a couple Bye -bye. questions on this. Councillor McNulty. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, a good report, I guess my question is to what, it, what is the extent of the contamination and, and where is it in particular? Is it throughout the whole park? Through the chair to Councillor McNulty, yes, there is low-level contamination throughout the area due to past historical activities on the site. Okay, but what kind of contamination is it? Is it a contamination of lead because it was a rifle range? There, uh, through the chair to Councillor McNulty, there is... Um, here, I'm just going to stop my video. Hold on. Uh, I'm still here. Um, I don't know. There is... Um, the contamination, uh, yes, related to the past activities 
of the shooting range and the Transport Canada communications towers that were previously on the site before the city took ownership. So basically, because of the towers, there were nine towers there at one time, and they were up everywhere from one end of it to the other. So um, the, it, will this report look at then at all aspects, of the whole 142 acres? Uh, through the chair to Councillor McNulty, yes, we, we will build upon the uh, already significant body of work that's been done on the site and then we'll look to pinpoint and further characterize and, and as they say in, uh, in, in this uh, field of study and this profession, delineate and characterize the contamination. So basically, uh, we're, we're, we've, we've identified a few uh, quote-unquote hot spots or areas of concentration and we'll look at those areas and, and really try to figure out how wide and deep and what kind of contaminants are in those uh, areas of concentration as well as do uh, additional testing throughout the site so we can get a, a full picture uh, of, of the nature and extent of contamination so we can determine the best uh, 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 next step in terms of managing uh, it on site. Now, okay, man, you talk about management. I'm concerned about uh, what the possibility, will we have to do remediation and is the contamination enough that we would have to do that kind of remediation? Um, through the Chair to Councilor McNulty, I'm not sure we can answer that question at this time. Uh, that's essentially the purpose of the study. Uh, I, I know, but some of us have some history with, with that particular site over the years, and uh, uh, basically you're saying if it's contaminated, does that mean we can't use it? Or if we decide to, to do something ourselves, now we've got Quantlin in there, they may be on a contaminated site, hopefully they're not, but does that mean we can't use it? Are we putting a moratorium on it? Through the chair to Councillor McNulty. Um, okay, now I better understand your question. Uh, we, we do, the staff, uh, the city does have, in fact, what's called a uh, human health and ecological risk assessment that was done for the city in 2019. And the recommended management approach uh, of that uh, study, that assessment that was prepared by our consultant engineers uh, who are specialized in contaminated sites recommended the placement of 600 to 900 millimeters of clean uh, soil on top of the uh, parent material, the existing peat, as, as the recommended uh, approach to managing the contamination on the site. And with the placement of, of the soil over that parent material, this existing material that's already on site, um, KPU is safely uh, able to and will uh, for as long as they want um, uh, farm uh, the, uh, the, uh, the KPU farm site, the Garden City lands, and provide uh, clean, safe, and uncontaminated um, uh, food for everybody. So given, given that, I've got a couple more questions, Your Worship. Given that, re I call that a remediation or a, a uh, 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 patch fix there. Could we do that with the rest of the areas without uh, further going into it? Because those of us know what some of the contamination was, and my question is the level of contamination and the question of what was there before. And um, that, that would be my question. Two questions then. One, can we do that with the rest of the site and uh, with 600 to 900 millimeters of good soil? and uh, carry on with business. Through the Chair to Councillor McNulty, um, uh, I, I'll answer that in, in uh, two ways. One, um, just to clarify, we are only uh, looking at uh, uh, conducting agriculture west of the dike, so that the eastern half of the bog would be studied, but not, of course, not filled. So we're focusing on the western half in terms of whether or not we'd fill. Right. Um, yes, uh, the human health and ecological risk assessment uh, does provide direction that placement of fill could uh, accommodate or, or allow for the safe use of, of the western half of the site. 
uh, that said, we, we still recommend um, conducting a study so that we can further, so we, need, we know for, for sure and we know exactly what we're, we're, we have on site. Um, and and uh, I think it is uh, the best management practice and, and it's our responsibility uh, that we, re we would recommend that this study uh, continue uh, as laid out. Yes. And I have no problem with the direction and, and the um, suggestions that you're giving us. My question, uh, next question is, it's going to take us three years to do this. Can we not do this concurrently while we're developing other things on the site? Uh, through the chair to Councillor McNulty, uh, absolutely. Um, we, we, we anticipate uh, on, uh, on the outside that the, the, the study will take three years. We, we would imagine that we'd be able to get, be getting uh, testing and samples done and analysis in a much, you know, in, within, within a year uh, of things. So uh, the full study and, and achieving a certificate of compliance from the province would take uh, a full three-year period, uh, that, as, as I understand the process to be. Well, if we can move our portion of um, the, um, the study up, uh, maybe we can uh, let the province have a little bit more time, because sometimes, as you know, things take a little longer across the water. Uh, but uh, I'd like to see us start uh, on this immediately and uh, uh, start getting whoever you're going to get to bring in and start doing some of the testing and assign a staff member to it, um, like yourself or somebody else, like we had before, and uh, move this up so we can continue on uh, what we're doing at, at the Garden City Land. So that's all for me for now, Your Worship. Councillor Wolf. Thank you. Uh, to, uh, through your worship of the staff, we just have, uh, I think, three questions that kind of piggyback on some of the questions that were just asked. So the, the first one uh, relates to the, the timeline uh, of the study, and it seems like there's a, a study, or sorry, not a program that will come after it, and I'm reading in the conclusion that the that program, I don't know if it has an official name or anything yet, but it might be the remediation program for the oil management and remediation program. Uh, is there um, an idea, will, will some of that program begin within the three years of the study or will all of that work commence after the full study is done? So I think you might have answered that things can happen earlier, but that part could be clarified. Yeah, um, through the chair to uh, Councillor Wolf. yeah, it's my understanding that uh, of, of the process that uh, we do the testing, and then there's analysis, and then there's uh, certain filings that need to be done with the province. And the ultimate goal um, is is what's called a uh, uh, a certificate of compliance, basically uh, certifying the Garden City lands is a clean has a clean bill of health, and we've managed the con uh, contamination on site uh, responsibly, and, and it's been dealt with. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, and my follow-up uh, through the chair is the, the uh, you also mentioned in the response to uh, Councillor McNulty about the BOG study. Are you referring to study that we're looking at approving today as inclusive to BOG impacts or BOG uh, um, um, contamination uh, from chemical, the same chemicals as in the farm property, or were you referring to a, a, another study? Um, and the reason why I'm asking is that I don't want the work that's being done to neglect or um, cause um, maybe drainage changes to the farm parcel, but negatively impacting the bog. So I just want to make sure that on the other side of the dike, it is in inclusive in all um, studies and remediation work that occurs uh, going forward on, on, the, on the land. Through the chair to Councillor Wolf. Um, yes, just to clarify, the uh, contaminated site study, uh, the testing will occur throughout the site. Uh, the testing will not negative, in a ne negatively impact the, the bog. It's simply to uh, locate and identify and, and characterize uh, any contaminations uh, that exist throughout the site. And, and no, the bog will not be negatively impacted in terms of uh, drainage or otherwise. Um, the, the study is, is, is a testing 
um, taking of samples and and then uh, looking at them in the lab, and then uh, our our uh, contaminated site specialists um, doing a desktop study and review uh, of of the results, and then uh, recommending to us the best approach to move forward. Uh, terrific. Thanks for the explanation. I was just looking at soil uh, under a microscope with grade nines today, so I totally value the work that's going to be done, and, and thank you for that. For finding a funding source as well. Thanks. All right. Uh, awesome. Councillor Steves. Yeah, thanks. Um, I've got a couple of questions. I'm really pleased we're doing this study. This is something I wanted to do in the first place because it is contaminated, and we had a partial study done by uh, KPU. And maybe you can circulate that study to the rest of the counselors. Uh, I'm not sure how many years ago we did it. And I talked to KPU about two years ago, and they said the study was inadequate because they, they, only, they, they were quite some distance apart. But the, the, they themselves could actually do the study. So my first question is, would, would you consider just simply getting KPU to con continue the study that they, they already initiated, and maybe we can get it done faster that way? Through the chair to Councillor Steve, it's, it's my understanding that uh, the, 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 the study, the work that needs to be done, uh, does need to be done uh, by a third party, and it also will re require a contaminated site specialist to complete and prepare the documentation for the province. Yeah, okay. Next question I've got, maybe you, yeah, and you don't need to answer this, I guess, it's a... It's a it's an interesting one because we did fill in uh, 20 acres already, and how did we do that without getting permission of the province? Did we just ignore it, or what happened? Or do you know, because you weren't here? Uh, through the chair to uh, Councillor Steves, uh, we proceeded on the recommendation of the uh, our contaminated site specialist to that uh, that was the appropriate measure for that portion of the site, and we, appre uh, we re the city re uh, received approval from the Agricultural Land Commission to uh, place the soil to establish the KPU farm area. Okay, that's so, so okay there. Uh, final question I've got is that um, in the uh, um, looking at the sites, I suggest you may want to look specifically, I think the site we're looking at as being the worst is along Garden City Road. And my suggestion it is we're not dealing with an, a 1915 uh, uh, gun emplacement because their guns were firing and the bullets would, would be landing somewhere in the nature park. Plus, they were steel tipped. There was no lead to them. However, all along uh, Garden City Road, right from Westminster Highway to Alderbridge, there was about six anti-aircraft gun emplacements in World War II. And they dug down into the ground and had... Uh, had uh, sandbags around and foxholes, and they would have had oil and gas and goodness knows what that you have when you're servicing guns and soldiers. So you might want to look at that to see if there's if there's some locations along there that that, that may be the, the most contaminated areas. The second thing you might want to look at is that uh, when we uh, were doing a study in 1972, I believe, uh, trying to find out where the lead was coming that killed five cows just north of this, and we discovered it was the metal X plant. We also discovered that on the main roads, uh, un 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 leaded gas was actually polluting the soil at, uh, all along the main roads that, were, that were, uh, had heavy traffic. So that may also be another cause of the pollution. So I guess what I'm suggesting, you may just find because of the aircraft guns and because of the leaded gasoline, that the contamination is only along the area fronting Garden City Road and the bog area we're keeping may be okay. So it's just something to consider when, when we're doing the study. Hopefully that's what we'll find because it'd be not too good if we find the whole place is contaminated. Okay, that's my final question. I do have one comment. I believe I was talking to Todd Gross uh, that um, we will still be able to get the fill. Where uh, one of the uh, and, um, sites that's being rezoned for a residence and industry was going to provide us a, with, with fill for the site, so we should be able to stockpile it. And where would we stockpile it? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Steve, um, I believe you're referring to the Polygon Talisman rezoning. Uh, that the the soil coming from that uh, potentially coming from that site would be uh, placed in the area 
just north of the existing uh, uh, Cape U farm area that they currently have under cultivation. Um, the, the area in the field north of, of where they're at now um, is still part of the 20 acre or eight hectare area that they've leased. And, and um, the city is still obligated to provide um, uh, soil for them to uh, establish that farm. So that's where it would be placed. Oh, would there, would there be any excess or that would just pretty well take it all up? Um, we will, uh, through the chair to Councillor uh, Steve's, all the material that would uh, is projected to come off of the Polygon site would be uh, used on the KPU farm site. Okay, I guess my suggestion is should anything else come along, we need to, may need to stockpile if we find other sites. Uh, so that we'll have a uh, when we do finish the study. My final uh, uh, isn't the questions that comment. Um, we had, had asked uh, to have 300 allotment gardens uh, probably win this spring. I'm assuming that's now not possible at the Garden City. So is it possible for us to transfer the 300 allotment gardens over to Terra Nova and develop an area there for for allotment gardens? Which, which would it work out if we wanted to get? some emergency allotment gardens in because of COVID-19 and everybody wanted to plant a garden. Um, through the chair to Councillor Steve, um, w w there is a portion of the site that is a, an existing uh, gravel pad that could host uh, uh, community garden plots temporarily above ground and that could be uh, potentially relocated at a future date once um, a, uh, you know, once we've fi made a final determination on how to farm uh, the area around it, uh, west of the dike, um, with respect to the number and and how, how how many of those community garden plots we'll have on the site, we're still working on that, and and we'll be able to provide you some direction at a future date. Um, we we had anticipated um, holding a. A workshop with council, a staff workshop to which council would be invited, uh, but uh, we are not able to do so until uh, we can. It can safely occur uh, once we get through this uh, this current situation with the pandemic. Okay. Okay. Is there any place we can accommodate the 300 allotment gardens? I mean, you said there is a could be temporary. Um, I, I think it's important to make, if you if you come back with us in the spring very quickly with a site that we can actually add some gardens so I think would be very helpful. Could you consider Steve, that? Sir, the councillor Steve. Could you consider Sorry. that and then get back to us on that maybe in the form of a memo or some information for council Alex? Alex? Through the, uh, yes, yes, count, uh, Chair, uh, Mr. Mayor, yes, we will. Okay, Councillor McPhail. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you to staff, well, thank you uh, for the report and some good questions and good discussion. Um, my, my first question is, given that this is a three-year study, uh, can Council get updates on a regular interval? Because I think there's a lot of interest from Council and certainly the community on the progress of the project there. And, you know, there are some referrals about the Garden City lands. You know, there is a, a soil remediation referral and one about the farm. And so any work that's going to be done that results out of this plan uh, would, I guess, come to council, uh, committee and council for discussion and approval? Uh, through the chair to Councillor McPhail, absolutely. We can provide those updates uh, to you uh, as they come in. Um, this, we view this study as being a, a crucial uh, step in, 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 in almost uh, starting a cascade of, of activity, particularly focused on urban agriculture and the placement of community gardens on the site. All right, thanks very much. All right, uh, let's have a, Linda, do you want to make that motion then? No, yeah, I have some so, recommendations. So that's moved and seconded. Uh, further comments? All those in favor? What? Any Hello? opposed? Hello? I'm hearing Hello? someone, I'm not seeing anybody and nobody has raised their hand. That must it's be Councillor Day. Well, what yeah. is it, Councillor Day? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. I don't know. I've got Grant on the other phone and Claudia. I don't know what, why this isn't working. I'm sorry. Um, so 
you refer in GP34 to the contamination. Is there a report on that? Um, through through the chair to Councillor Day, yes, we have numerous reports on that. Um, we've provided those documents uh, to Council. There's specifically the Human Health and Ecological Risk Assessment, and uh, we'd be happy to provide an updated uh, a copy of that document for sure. But yes, uh, there is existing contamination on the site based on the, uh, the historical activity that occurred, namely the um, the former shooting range as well as the uh, Transport Canada towers. Okay, thank you. And then, in terms of the the report, you've, uh, uh, Kwantlen College has already done a significant amount of report. It, um, is there a possibility that we could start with that to improve this three year timeline? That's already been reflected uh, on a question from Councillor Steves. Okay, and my next question is, is there any reason we couldn't start the testing on the site that's going to be the allotment garden so we can get that done lickety-split and move up the process so we don't have to wait so long for those allotment gardens? Um, through, the, uh, through the Chair to Councillor Day, um, the, the, the testing will, uh, it will, will certainly look at uh, maybe advancing uh, the testing on the western half of the site. Uh, where agriculture is uh, identified to occur as being in the first phase of testing. And, um, yeah, we can probably make that happen. Okay. If there's some, uh, probably, I'm just, I'm not understanding why. You Don't you direct them where you want them to start? The third party? That will be uh, Through the Terry Councillor Day. Um, uh, for, uh, forgive me, I, 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 I misspoke. Uh, Yes, we will give them uh, direct, uh, um, you know, direction to to proceed with uh, prioritizing the western half of the site uh, for testing in phase one. Okay, thank you. Sooner the better. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Aye. That is carried. Uh, then we have a property tax letter to the province. Um, we need a discussion before any motion gets on the floor on this one. Uh, Councillor Day, did you want to comment on this? Yes. Um, I had some um, citizens call me and tell me that they were trying to work within the system uh, uh, in, in, with the province, and it was an antiquated system. It was not working properly. There was no communication. There was nowhere to leave a message, and when they and they didn't get a call back. So subsequently, they, they went on the website, they registered, and then they found out later that they didn't register to the second level, only to the first level. Well, now they're getting fined. And these are seats that can hardly afford it. And given the, the really fair way that this was done, I think we need to ask the problem to step up their game. And, I'm, and, and if you can see from the letter um, from Ivy Wong, which, uh, the, the, the city was told, am I still on? Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, the phone is turning me off. Um, but what I understand is that while we wanted to help the seniors, the province told us to stand down and that we could not help them. And so I just feel that we need to spell out to the province what happened and where we think they can make improvement. Well, in speaking with Ivy Wong about this situation, as I understand, and I see Ivy is on the line, so we'll ask her. But as I understand it, uh, these particular folks, uh, they were told that they had further steps that they had to take. And secondly, the city, out of an abundance of caution, sent a letter to them amongst others who had previously had the deferrals, telling them that they had further steps that they had to take. Is that correct? Uh, to the chair, yes, it is correct. We did uh, tell the, we did send separate letters to all uh, all taxpayers with deferrals to advise them that they need to uh, apply for the deferral application once they receive their property tax bill. All and, right. And also, if they had questions, they were supposed to call the province for further details. And that was told, they were told that right in the letter, I see, which that letter has now been circulated by the clerk. Is that correct? Oh. It's correct. All right. So, 
so the, the, the result was the people phoned and they couldn't get through well, to the tax department. Well, in any case, what is your motion? Is it as as written? We, that, uh, well, just space that we write to the province to let them know the problems that the locals are having and that they need to have better communication. It's And, and that fines should be um, uh, waived given the, the lack of communication and given that um, people didn't uh, knowingly do this wrong. They just couldn't manage the system. All right, so the motion is what is on the agenda. Is there a seconder? It's the Second. it's seconded. Councillor McNulty. Uh, Bill, I think you're muted. There you go. Bishop, if we're going to write the province um, with regard to a process that the province mostly has, which is good or bad, depending on how you have, I think, with due respect, I think we've got to be a little more um, clearer ourselves of what we want and outline it a little bit better. And I'm not sure what that is. Uh, on this, I don't have any problem questioning the province's procedure, et cetera, and going to bat for citizens. But what is it to just say communication? Um, I'm not criticizing. It's just, you know, they're going to take, okay, oh, well, I think we got to maybe offer a suggestion, outline the procedures, one, two, three, whatever it is, a letter goes to, and how, you know, clearly outline it and enunciate it on the web or whatever, wherever that communication is, like, um, Ivy Wong suggested um, that the city has done something. Well, we did something, but maybe that's what the province should have done. And that's all I'm trying to say. So before we go further, I think we just got to get a few more details here uh, on what we're asking for. Councillor McPhail. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you to staff. Did we have very many complaints? Um, to the chair, to Councillor McPhail, we've had probably less than 50 complaints. We had over 2,680 applica um, successful applications. So um, there were some confusion. There were long uh, wait times at the province. But if people were willing to be able to get through. So I think the issue is it's not just the tax deferral program. It was this year was the changeover year. So perhaps we need to, you know, specifically say that. It went from being where the local governments were handling it to where the province took it over. Um, so I, I think there was some issue in the changeover. So I think Councillor McNulty, what he was saying was correct. We need to be really specific in what we're saying in our letter. Thank you. Councillor Al. Uh, Uh, you're you're muted there. I want to ask staff, you know, how does this compare to previous years in terms of, you know, the people people who uh, missed the deadline for application? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Al, uh, I would say it's about the same. Uh, every year we have many people who miss the deadline for the application because they've forgotten or they thought that they um, didn't need to apply or that um, they just um, forgot to, to send it, they, even though they've, they've filled in the form. So is it any more than prior years? I would say it's about the same. And what did we do in the, in, in the previous years if people missed the deadline? Uh, it's through the chair to Councillor Al. If people miss the deadline, we unfortunately would have had pe penalized them for missing the deadline. So there's no way that they can uh, appeal to the, to the provincial government for, um, I mean, uh, cancelling the fines and that kind of thing in the previous years? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Al, uh, the community charter is specific in that we must charge a, a uh, penalty if the payment or the deferment application, which is similar to a payment, is uh, submitted after the due date. So we would not be able to reverse the penalties. So in, if a look at the motion itself, it seems to suggest that this year we are, I mean, if we pass this motion, we are asked
asking the government, the Polish government, to to do something new, right? Something that uh, they can forgive the fine. So this is something that has never happened before. And of course, I think the jurisdiction is within the, the provincial government, but it hasn't happened before. I mean, waiving of the fine. Um, to the chair, to Councillor Al, um, the province would turn it around and back to the city, saying, "Well, it's up to the city to uh, to reverse the the penalties." And we've had numerous debates with the province in that we we. Um, point back to them to say that the community charter is the one that uh, stipulates that we must charge the penalty. We don't have the um, authority to waive that penalty. Okay, my final question is, now, if the, the penalty is being waived, would the city suffer any anything, like in terms of the revenue? Do we suffer the, the loss of uh, the, the, the fines, so to speak? Uh, through the chair to councillor out, yes. Uh, the the if we waive the penalty, the city would lose that penalty revenue. But um, unlike other revenues, this is uh, a type of revenue that we're not looking to earn. Uh, we don't budget for this. We we are hoping we don't have to charge people penalties, but it's just something that we can't avoid. Yes, of course, you know, we don't want to find people for, for revenue. But I think if we are asking the police government to waive the fines, actually, you know, it's, the, it's us, the city, and the people who are, I mean, losing uh, the, the, the money. So are we asking the police government to be the good guy, to waive the fines? But actually, you know, we um, must bear the consequences. Uh, through the chair to Councillor Al, um, the best way, the best solution is to have the province backdate the application to the date where they tr initially tried to make that application. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I think that's that's a better solution. Yes. I I, I would say that you know, perhaps that's what we should ask instead of you know what is being written in the motion right now. All right, Councillor Liu. Thank you, Worship. I, I, I see that this is a really unfortunate situation for some people, and um, you know, certainly, it's upsetting to know that certain people have, have run into this situation. I think, on the other hand, we have to look at it that we want to encourage people to pay on time and to not keep creating loopholes for people to be late and to keep being late. Um, you know, we saw with our staff earlier this year how they were chasing after people who hadn't paid for three years and were at risk of having their home be put on the auction block, and how hard staff had to work on that to try and keep going after people, going after people. So, um, you know, I, I, I would agree with, with asking the province to backdate applications for people who had clearly gone through some sort of process of app, getting their, uh, their online presence known, created, um, and, and obviously fallen off the wagon at some point in the process. But I think we, what we really want is people to, to pay attention to the mail they're getting, to pay attention to the notices they're getting, to pay their taxes on time, and to, and to be clear about what's happening, what they own, and who, ha who is supposed to look after this stuff if they go away or something else. Because, you know, certainly we saw staff work extremely hard in the fall trying to dig up owners of property, trying to make sure people were paying for their properties for their taxes so that they wouldn't get, get sold at auction. And, um, you know, every time we create ways to circumvent the, the existing rule, we just create more opportunity for more confusion and for and then creating more work for, you know, the people that aren't supposed to be doing the work on this. So what was the due date on, uh, for the application this year on the deferments? Was it, was it July or September? Uh, to the chair, it is exactly the same as the tax bill. Um, the due date is July the 2nd, but we do not penalize unless uh, we do not ex receive the application by September 30th. All right, so if they, if they got it in by September 30th, let's say they got it in on September 30th, there would be no penalty uh, for the people we're talking about. That's correct. Um, my position is we've got to have one rule. 
I mean, the province says for a late payment, uh, say a conventional payment, we, can't, we have no jurisdiction to waive the penalty. We can move the date, we set the penalty date, but once that's set, that's it. And I don't, I, I don't see how we can advocate for one rule for one group and backdating things uh, for another group. Um, in this case, they had months extra, like what, three months extra to do it, and they had not only the province telling them what the process was, but they had a, the, the city went out of their way to send letters to everybody they knew of that was a likely candidate for a deferment. So I don't see how we can, how we can do one without the other. Now, I'm, I'm going to split up this motion, what I call the question. The first part, writing to the provincial government to concern, address concern for better communication. I, I can support that uh, based on the suggestions by a couple of the councillors talking about being specific about, and, and especially about the changeover and the fact that this is a new, this is a new program or a, a, a new procedure and uh, they need to be more specific about it. So I think that we should, uh, you know, get their attention on that. But again, there are no end of compelling circumstances uh, for people paying their taxes. And I just don't see how we can uh, assist people in the way they're asking here uh, in this case and not in every single case. It's not a matter of revenue. Uh, I don't think we're con concerned with that. It's, it's the fact that there has to be one rule for all. So I'm gonna call the question, I'm gonna call it in two parts. Uh, I'll call it on the first part, uh, first aspect, which is to address the concerns regarding the deferral program and the better communications. All those in favor on that? Uh, Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, so that's carried without opposition. And on the second part, uh, all those in favor? Okay, I'm seeing oh. Councillor Steves, I'm seeing Councillor Wolf. Um, I assume, I'm sure Councillor Day is in support of that. Yeah, um, all those opposed? Uh, if I could see your hand. So it's, it's McPhail, Lou, McNulty, Al, and the mayor opposed. All right. Uh, so that, that's defeated. The first one's carried. Moving along to the Richmond Bowling Clubhouse, Lawn Bowling Clubhouse, the floor plan and the pre preliminary form and character. Uh, we do have a delegation who may wish to speak on that, Keon Wong, who we have heard from before, but let's first of all go to staff. I understand Elizabeth Ayers and Martin Yaunas, uh uh, are the staff contacts on this uh, staff? Do you have anything to add to your report? To the chair, we we will receive any questions uh, and clarifications that that uh, council need. All right, um, let's go to the delegation. Uh, Keon Wong is with us. Yes, uh, according to Madam Clerk. Uh, Keon, are you there? We're not hearing you, Keon. Did you, do you, are you muted in some fashion? Let's see if I can see anything on my list. Um, oh, here he is. Uh, okay. Okay, Keon Wong, you are muted. On the telephone, how do you unmute? We're, we're unmuted okay, staff is unmuting him right now. Just bear with me a sec. Mr. Wong, apparently you need on your own phone to press unmute. Is there a number like star six or something to unmute? Okay, it's okay. okay right now, Mr. Mayor. There you are. We got you. Okay, Mr. Okay. Wong, did you want to add comments? Uh, well, uh, we just want to say that we're excited to know the plan and the 
uh, the design is uh, put forward for the council approval this meeting, and we support the staff uh, the staff reports regarding all the aspects. And our club is ready to move forward to the next phases of development if the, the plan and the design is approved by the council. Thank you so much. Okay. Now the the long bowling. Uh club is aware that uh, one of the uh, characteristics of having uh, a building this size is that there will be other community groups using that common space uh, at times that are convenient to your lawn bowling club. Do you, uh, you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions of the delegation? Are, all right, Mr. Wong, uh, there's no questions of you. Is there any, anybody have any questions generally? Um, okay, Councillor Liu. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, just looking at the preliminary designs and the pictures, and I know it's still early, uh, and thanks staff for, for putting this together. I'm just what, wanted to make sure that there's going to be sufficient uh, bicycle and maybe scooter parking for people and possibly even have, um, you know, opportunities for people to recharge their scooters if you're, you know, the elderly with mobility ones. So if people come to the apartment coming from further away, if they have somewhere to charge up their scooter, uh, maybe somewhere outside if that's a possibility. Through the chair to Councillor Lou. We will follow the city's um, uh, council adopted uh, accessibility guidelines, and yes, we will be uh, providing um, uh, points of parking for bicycle and for scooter, uh, for the scooters for, uh, for the disabled. Okay, thank you. Uh, and also, um, just making sure that there's enough overhang on the south side for sunshade for, um, to create enough space for shade for people, because I, I think that as things get hotter, the summers are getting hotter, we want to make sure that is enough shade for the building itself and for the people that are using it. And it's hard to tell, obviously, from these preliminary drawings, but you know, I just want to make sure that those considerations are put into account. Through, through the chair to council, though, we will, of course, through detailed design, ensure that the overhang and coordination with, with the building committee is, is addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Day. Vice Mayor Brody, um, yeah, I, I'm really disappointed in this design. I think that um, the low densification is an absolute waste. It's only one level high, and if you look at the, the drawings on page GP49 or GP51, all the way around this, there is a large high density. And so I feel that we could have done a heck of a lot better. I also don't think that we should be putting $5.3 million towards a 4,900-square-foot uh, clubhouse when we should instead be putting that money towards the hospital tower. So I will not be supporting this. I would just like to remind the councillors we're talking about the preliminary form and character and I think we've had a very fulsome debate on whether residents should be involved or uh, in uh, on the project in general. Councillor Wolf. Thank you, uh, Your Worship, and uh, to staff, a couple of questions. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll start with the, the follow-up to Councillor Liu's question about shading um, or shelter as well from the rain. So I was out there yesterday in full rain and um, only going underneath the thick trees around the existing clubhouse could you actually get some shelter from the rain. Um, I'm looking on page uh, 50, and it shows the... North, I believe it's the north side of the building looking towards the north green on page 50. And just seeing that overhang of the building as being quite um, short um, to allow people to, to sit and gather. I, I read in the report it talks about this space, this walkway is being tied to the loop around the ponds and from the parking lot, uh, which is just behind where this photo would be taken. Um, and to allow places where people might sit. Um, so I'm not sure if this design is allowing for shelter, um, if the design is allowing for seating to be placed alongside there so people can view things from just outside the building um, and not get in the way of, of the moving traffic through there. So I have a slight concern there. Um, the, the other comment on, on that one is um, related to the, sorry, where is it here? Uh, Oh, on the page of 48, so if you just back up, uh, Councillor Day mentioned it just being a single floor, but in, in, in my 
view of, of page 48's image, it looks like there's a height extension. So I'm not sure why in the design there's added massing or added ceiling height for part of the building. I would feel that that's going to add to overall costs of maintaining the heat uh, level of the temperature throughout the year. Um, so is it is it one floor or am I seeing that there's a, a, a sub floor or something above there? Exactly. The chair to Council Wharf, it is one floor, and and it it is it, it just looks like a breakup box. It is basically the same amount of material required to build a straight roof. This is part of the design, so it will not impact any of the costs that, that, that you mentioned. Uh, thanks on that one. Uh, to follow uh, up with a few other question areas, uh, when I was there, the, the public washroom building was was being used it was in the daytime. Um, so as I see on on the design here, it would not be impacted. So would it be the existing um, public washroom building, and it would be open throughout the time of the construction? Through the chair to councilor, if that is correct, we will leave it open, and it will remain. And we will also provide the the, the clubhouse with a trailer and uh, a storage bin, so they can operate the the, the, the bowling uh, greens. Great. Right. Yeah, I, re I read that they're going to be provide they'd be provided those those features. That's great. Uh, I was concerned about the washing because it was actually a lineup of, for people to use it. Um, how about that other building there, the district energy building? It, it's kind of hidden. You can't really tell what's happening in there, but there's a lot of noise going on. Um, will the, this design be able to be connected to District Energy? Through the Chair to Council Wolf, this District Energy building is basically for the Carrera building. We are working with our sustainability group and try to coordinate and try to connect it where it is possible and feasible. Uh, it, it's all about performance and the loading for the building. So we will be working with our, with, with our consultants and our sustainability group to see the possibility of, of connecting or uh, adding any kind of sustainable features to the building. Okay, terrific. And two final questions uh, then on that. Uh, I was at the, the advisory committee for the environment the other day last week, and there was uh, some city staff there speaking about the comparison of step, step code, which is kind of the modern way of, of uh, getting an efficient building design, and, and the exterior is a big player of that, the, the envelope of the building. Uh, and then comparing that to LEED, the L-E-E-D, and this design seeking to reach the gold level. So uh, I'm uh, so I, I learned a few things from that meeting from staff. One is that this type of building, there is no step code design um, intake uh, or way to, to get a building like this towards uh, being passive house or just a higher number of step code. So uh, I'm curious why um, the design was, was I mean, perhaps limited at, at going to lead, uh, lead gold. And uh, because there are other municipalities around that have built city buildings to levels of step code that are not in the, the existing building type, like residential or, um, or hotel. We just approved that a uh, couple of council meetings ago. All right, let's, um, get, so, it, let's okay. get staff reaction to this, the step code sure, versus thanks. lead. Through the, through the chair to council, Wolf, the adopted high performance building policy adopted by council dictates that we build our buildings to lead gold certified buildings. If council directs us or the policy changes, we, we, are, we will look at into other efficiencies. As for the step code, at this moment, there is no step code for corporate buildings. So. Okay, terrific. And my very last question, thank you for that, uh, is what is the OBI, so the operating budget impact, for the existing clubhouse? I know there's going to be a ballpark here because we're not talking about programming and all the other stuff yet, but uh, can, you, can you ballpark the OBI comparison? from current to future? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Wolf, um, the OBI will be very minimal because the club uh, itself uh, carries on almost all of the activities and uh, expenses associated with the operation of that club, including the cleaning of the facility, uh, full maintenance of the facility. So the OBI will really be any increases in utilities uh, and then ongoing contribution to maintenance of the building. Uh, infrastructure itself. Okay, thank you. That's all my questions. Great. Councillor Howe? Your Worship, I have a few questions for staff. Now, I understand that the total square footage of 4,500 square feet was approved by Council. So I think staff is not going to, to increase or decrease that. But during the process of uh, the concept plan, was there any discussion about having two or four buildings 
two floor building instead of one uh, one one floor in order to reduce the uh, footprint. So was was there any any discussion or thoughts about that? Please, uh, Jack. Please uh, get near your microphone. It's hard to hear you. So we'll go to staff on that question. Through the chair to Councillor Al, uh, we did consider uh, d different configurations of the building at different levels and were presented to Council, and Council directed staff to go with the option of a single 449 square foot facility. Okay. And my second question is now, um, this, is, this building is going to be shared by other community groups. So is there a separate entrance for those uses? Through the, the chair. chair. Through the chair to Councillor Al, yes, uh, the way the building has been designed is specifically so that the large multi-purpose room can be divided into two. Each has a separate way of getting in and out of that space as well as access to separate washrooms so that they can operate independently and provide access for two different community groups at one time. Great. Yeah, that's very good. Now, my final question, of course, this is, we are only talking about the design. But in the future, who is going to, to monitor or, you know, allocate the time uh, and space for, for community use? Is it the subsidy staff or is it the clubhouse? I mean, through, the chair yeah, through the chair to Councillor Al, it, it will be the lawn bowling clubhouse. Uh, although with all of our community associations, as you know, we have a very close working relationship with them. And uh, so we will be in touch with them and ensure that it is well used by other community groups. Good. Thank you. Those are my questions. Um, I'm going to I'm going to suggest uh, that we we add to the motion to pick up on some of the comments that were made. Um, that uh, I'm just kind of thinking this through. But but the idea is we we talked about shading, we talked about sustainable fe features, and we talked about the step code. So. I suggest a number two would be, uh, as as the um, building is developed, that staff uh, keep council informed on various aspects of the project, uh, including the need for uh, shading, uh, for um, the, on the per shading on the perimeter of the building. Uh, for sustainable features such as um, uh, as uh, utilizing district energy and uh, uh, whether using the step code uh, is is feasible. Does that make sense? Someone want to move yes, yes, move all that? So it'd be what's written. And secondly, to get more information. So I, I think I saw Councillor McPhail's hand. You're moving that, Thank and you. it's seconded. Um, further questions on that? Comments? Okay. Councillor Wolf. Great. Thank you for entertaining that. Uh, it's not a further question. It's um, um, I and I appreciate all the, the additions were just that were just made there. I, I definitely support all, all of those going forward. Um, I, I feel that the direction uh, for staff to um, to seek out uh, the, a higher level of, of like lead platinum uh, passive house. Uh, if we're, if we're going to be spending uh, top dollar for this uh, the size of a, a building, uh, then then uh, I, I think it really should uh, ignite all of the potential that that a uh, high um, high quality. Uh, staff can design, and I, and I think this isn't going um, far enough. When I was there yesterday, I think seeing seeing the the use of the space, uh, it, it's a park space, and perhaps recreational buildings have a have a better place elsewhere. Uh, this is also the item I've heard more about since being elected as a councillor than any other individual item uh, in the opposition from our community. So I, I just it, it doesn't. Uh, Feel right that this would be a unanimous decision going forward. When I clearly have heard uh, a lot of, of um, talk about when we first discussed it that it wasn't it wasn't uh, right then that we're committing that amount of money, and then now to make that same kind of commitment that feels even even wrong under the situation we're in. So I, I would actually hope that this gets voted down and can be um, referred to to a later time, uh, like after. Council looks into what are our priority capital projects. I don't know 
if approving this today um, ahead of the next item on the agenda is, is the best thing to do. So I'd, I'd like to um, to vote this down and then um, to, uh, refer it back to staff for the answer to those things that um, Your Worship just added, but uh, also to, um, to have some other things come back before this returns. So the, the, the reason why I'm opposing it, thank you. Let me be very clear. Those comments were made, frankly, Councillor Wolf, partly by you. And this is a way to incorporate your comments into the design going forward. And so if it's not something you want, please say so. Otherwise, staff has the direction under the motion that's in front of us to look at those issues and to make sure that they, we get reviews and we get more information on it. Um, Councillor Day. Councillor Day, before we go to you, I'm going to remind you, we are not talking about the wisdom of this project. If you want to talk about the program and the form, fine. Okay. What I don't understand is on GP44, we talk about the site plan as being coordinated with the Mineru Lakes Renewal Project. That's not in the report. So if we're going to be amending this motion, I think we should at least include that because we've been waiting a very long time for that Mineru um, Lakes Renewal Report and a project. And um, I think this is putting the cart before the horse. So wh where is that report? This is to talk about the form and design and the character of the Lawn Bowling Center. Okay, period. So I'm going to call the question then on the motion. All those in favor? Those opposed? It's carried with Councillor Steves, Wolf, and I'm sure Councillor Day is opposed. So that's carried. Okay, then we go to the Steveson Community Center and the Branch Library replacement site selection. Again, we have uh, Elizabeth Ayers and Martin Yonis. To the chair, we are happy to answer any questions. We don't have any additions. Okay. Now, on this one, I'm just going to again remind you what we're talking about. We are not talking about the wisdom of this project. We are talking about where the project should be uh, cited. So please, uh, uh, please uh, make your remarks accordingly. Councillor Day. Brody. Well, this project is, uh, is a good example of good communication, and I was really pleased to see that the committees were put together uh, to look really seriously at the location of the Steveson Community Center, and I agree with all the letters we've received, and I agree with the report from the committee that site number three is absolutely the best option. So this is a good example of a public project. Thank you. Councillor McNulty. Thank you, Worship. Um, I'm going to support the uh, uh, Site 3. I think uh, staff and uh, uh, committee um, and the building committee, the Stevenson Committee Association and other representatives um, are there. Um, I just wanted to make sure the integrity of the library was, uh, was going to be okay to be uh, moving it uh, along with this uh, to that site. I think it's extremely important that we uh, we maintain that. Um, by moving it east, which makes, I mean, this is a no-brainer. Um, it, it's uh, when you look at the site, and if you know Steveson Park, uh, with the uh, baseball diamond that was put in back in the 20s, the heritage trees that were paid for by the community, uh, you look at the martial arts center and its integrity, the net law, et cetera, this basically one is the only uh, place to put it, but it uh, makes sense it, by, if you wish by default. And I think it, it's good. Um, you made a comment with regard to we might have to cut the bank on the east side. Um, I went and, and obviously I'm, I'm down there quite a bit. The, uh, would we have to cut um, into the bank? Could we not leave the, the berm still the same? Um, with the um, the diamond that's um, uh, to the north, wouldn't there be enough room where the community police station is, etc.? Through the chair right to over council. there. To, through the chair to Council McNulty, 
through detailed design, we will look at the, uh, locating the, the, the community center in the proper location and minimize impact on the CPO and the berm. But the size of the community center that we are proposing is its footprint is approximately our recommendation is about 30 to 35,000 square feet. So what we will try to move away and from from impacting any berm or the CPO um, that will show within detailed design and positioning. We will take that under advisement. Uh, excuse my ignorance on that, and I appreciate the comment, and I thank you for that. Like 35,000 square feet, uh, does it take uh, the first parking lot to the east? Uh, do we actually even go in front of the uh, gardens or the um, the um, martial arts center for 35000 Because we're going up, correct? We're going to go up three stories or maybe even four if we want. Um, that requires a smaller footprint, doesn't it? Through the chair to Council McNulty, yes, we are going up more than one, one one floor because of the double gym and the program requirements. And, yes, we will be going into the east parking lot. We will try to position the building where it complements the JCC and the Martial Arts Center. And, and hence, even when we do take parking stalls in that area, we will try to coordinate the, where it becomes, it gives it more presence and, and highlights these, these, um, these important facilities in the city. Given what you've put here in terms of parking stalls, are, can we maximize the under, well, we'll call it the underground parking for the moment. Can we maximize that? Um, um, where we're, we're parking underneath um, the structure as opposed to uh, surface parking? Through the chair to Councillor McNulty, we have looked at the parking and increasing the underground parking will increase cost significantly. And so we looked at a, at a mixture of surface parking and underground parking to meet the demands of, or the parking demands for the building. Everything is possible, but it will cost money, Councillor. You know, I think it's a good blend. I'd like to see that and see what we can uh, we can do uh, uh, with that. I think, uh, first of all, uh, the siting's good, and I'll, I'll be definitely supporting it. Um, and I want to see us get on with this as soon as uh, we can. I, I guess my question is, and it, it maybe I have to go to uh, planning staff. Uh, you're talking about a full-time project manager. Do we have such beast in the in the system? And will it be one that can work with the community, uh, hand in glove, um, to, to get on with this project? Through the chair to Council McNulty, yes, the position does, the, 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 the title does exist within, within the city. And, and due to the complexity and the, and the long term of the project and our, the importance of this project, we, have, we, we are recommending hiring a new senior PM that will not impact our operating budget. I was hoping it would be you, and then we could get it all to move right along. Okay. okay. Well, that's good news. I, I thank you for that, and I'll be supporting that. I think a project of this magnitude uh, does warrant us uh, getting uh, people that, uh, and not saying we don't have this, have people, that's it, but it does take them away from the good work that they're already doing. And um, I think this uh, particular project uh, warrants uh, that kind of attention. And it's been, you know, it's interesting, they, when we put it on the list, I remember uh, when it wasn't even on the list, and I put it back on the list, and it went on the 50, um, uh, your worship, it went on the 50 um, projects within the community. And the distance between one, two, and three was enormous. There wasn't anything anywhere close with the, uh, the council of the day choosing that the community center was number one. Number two was the Lawn Bowls Clubhouse, and number three was the Dodge Shelter. And from there to number 25, I believe it is, and staff can pull out that report, there wasn't anywhere, anything in between when um, the tabulations were taken. So tonight we're doing two good projects right. uh, that are in the plan of previous council, uh, and the money was set aside uh, for those uh, particular uh, projects, and uh, I'm happy to be supporting it and say to... Uh, staff and community good work let's move it forward thank you all right so we've got a number of speakers that are to come um but i i just failed to mention that we have two delegations and i'm going to go to them now uh, i think we have letters from both of them but in any case uh first of all we have jordan oi are you with us jordan i am can you hear me yeah did you wish to speak to this Yes, please. Thank you. And, and good afternoon, Mayor Brody and Councillors. 
Um, so as vice chair of the library board, I'm here this afternoon speaking on, ha on behalf of the library and my fellow trustees to indicate our full support for the Seaston Community Center and branch library replacement program and to voice their support for the site selection recommendation that is forthcoming. I've been a member of the building committee since its inception March 2018, and I have appreciated the collaborative planning process that has resulted in a cohesive Seaston Community Center and library program. I'm confident that with the program and with a roughly 12,400 square foot library, we will meet the long-term needs of Richmond residents and allow for expanded library services to community members of all ages. As a Richmond resident, I personally appreciate and see the value of the co-location of the library and community center and the synergies it presents for both service and programming opportunities. I believe that the committee has my written submission that speaks to the high demand for library programs and services in Houston. I won't go into details on these statistics. But I do want to highlight that during the pandemic, the need for library services has only increased as we've had over 3,500 community members use the curbside hold pickup service between June and through August, which is two times as much as our other branches. And since reopening in September, the demand for holds has increased by roughly 25% per month. Okay. Our community... Go ahead. Our, our, our community clearly relies on our library for not only books, but our branches and staff provide vital services that are integral to an engaged, informed, and welcoming community. In consideration of community consultation feedback, the library fully supports the building committee preferred site three option as it has the shortest project completion time, timeline, which means the community will benefit from an expansion of services much sooner than with other options. The library's current programs and services can continue with minor disruption during the new facility's construction. The site location supports a two to three story facility that minimizes the footprint on park location while allowing maximum flexibility in service design and delivery and has the added benefit of co-location synergies and with, with other existing site services with optimal street visibility and easy access by various modes of transportation. So just in, in closing, I, I'd like to thank you for your, this, your time this afternoon and I look forward to your endorsement of the recommended site three option so that the next phase of this important project can proceed and Richmond residents can have access to it at exceptional new seats and community center and branch library. Thank you. Um, the other delegation is Al Sakai. Uh, Mr. Sakai, we have your letter. Uh, that has been circulated to all of council members. Did you wish to uh, speak to it? Uh, I think you need to unmute yourself, Al. You're muted, Al. There you go. Al? So, uh, if I could say a few words, I would appreciate it. Yep. Go yep. ahead. I have a, oh, okay. Um, how's that? How's yeah. that? Can you hear That's me now? That's fine. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'd like to just add a few things. Uh, if uh, council, if uh, you and the council are okay with that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, um, for everyone there, I'm, my name is Al Sakai, the current president of the Season Community Society, uh, as well as the chair of the Society New Building Committee. Just a couple of things I wanted to add is that we have done uh, extensive uh, community engagement uh, regarding the program and uh, through, through the uh, selection count consulting firm. So uh, we are pretty sure that um, uh, the program that uh, we've selected um, represents what the uh, community uh, would like. And so uh, I'm, we're pleased as well with the selection of option number three uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, you know, the cost containment was mentioned in there, and uh, uh, that's important to the entire uh, community, as well as the fact that option three uh, allows for the least amount of res risk that the costs would go up. Uh, secondly, option three allows many of the current programs and services to continue as the current building is going to be usable during the construction phase. Um, I understand that things will happen and we may have to cut back on some programs because of the construction because it's quite a complex project. I also like the recommendation of uh, a three-story building with a 30 to 40,000 square footprint uh, so that it will impact 
it'll have minimized the impact on the green space. Uh, the third thing I want to mention, uh, which is important, I believe, to the community, I'd like to focus on this. Option three would take the least amount of time to completion, at least two years less than the other options and perhaps up to five years less. Three to seven years would be a long time to offer restricted programming in alternate se settings for the much needed programs and services. This would not be in the best interests of the community. It is possible that an entire generation of youngsters would miss out on many of the uh, as many uses of the community center um, if we go with option one and two. In fact, the whole community will be affected by the site selection and time to completion, which is the other reason I'm so happy that um, uh, we're taking uh, that this project is uh, starting to move forward again. Um, it's a long time. I believe it started, some of the conversations started in 2016, but I think the need for the community center was realized um, even before that. Um, so I, I would really like to thank you for that. Uh, the, the last thing I want to mention is that um, the distance to the village is um, maximized by option three as well, so that um, uh, the disruption to the day-to-day -day, uh, business activities would be minimized. Oh, and I also want to mention that the community also wanted the uh, martial arts center and the swimming pool not to be affected. And I think that's another thing that uh, I want to mention that's not in the report itself, um, but that was clear from the community engagement meetings that we had. And also, uh, from the community center point of view, um, being able to keep the net shed uh, multi-purpose building is very important. Uh, the tennis facilities are used uh, so much that um, that would be it would have been sad if we had to lose that facility as well. And, uh, we also support the hiring of the senior management position to oversee the planning and construction of the building. It's such a complex uh, project. It would certainly be nice to have one person be the point person that we could go to for questions and updates and, and, and that sort of stuff. I don't know the logistics of uh, hiring senior project managers. It just seems like uh, a, a really good idea. So the Keystone Community Society New Building Committee looks forward to having input into the concept design phase now, such as preferred parking options that you mentioned, as well as the precise location and design of the building within the site. As uh, uh, Councillor McNulty mentioned, uh, we do want to uh, feature uh, some of our um, uh, historic buildings, like the Martial Arts Centre. We don't want it to be covered up. In fact, I, I was looking from um, the tram station down and envisioning what this could look like from Steveston, that if we had a big, um, some kind of plaza, and we could see the building on the east side, um, fronted by the martial arts center on the, the north side, and the swimming pool, and the multi-use building. I, I think we could have a, a beautiful um, setting there for um, anybody coming to, uh, for the residents of Steveston and for people that are coming to, to, um, to Steveston as well. So um, again, just want to thank um, Mayor and Council for uh, keeping this project going, and uh, 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 thank you very much. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Thank you, Al. Uh, before we go to other speakers, let's get the motion on the floor. Someone want to move it? Okay. So it's moved it's, and it's seconded. So I'll go to Councillor McPhail. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and this really is an exciting day. Um, it was exactly, well, December 12, 2016, this project got on the Major Facilities Project 2016-2026, and it was passed unanimously. So I'm really excited uh, to see this as another step towards um, fulfilling that goal. I do have a couple of questions, um, and uh, Mr. Jonas, and in answer to one of Councillor McNulty's questions about uh, the, the siting, you talked about the community police office, and on our GP59, it says that it, it, there's a possibility it could be impacted by the site location. And when are we going to know that? Because I know earlier in the discussions, we talked about the pros and cons or the synergies that could exist with a community police station office in the community center. So when are we going to know that? Because there is an added cost to that as well. Through the chair to Council McPhail. 
through the, the the development of the concept design, we will. We, we, it's a low risk that we will come near to the, the CPO. But during the concept design, we will be reviewing how we integrate the building with the site. As as uh, Council McNulty mentioned regarding the the historical buildings and hi how to highlight them, and so we will try to position the building as far as possible from it. But we do mention that there is. It depends on the soil conditions. At a certain point, if the CPO was impacted, we are highlighting to council that it could cost up to four point three million dollars to add it to the program, which is and it's not in, in our program right now. So more to come on that, if need be. That is correct. And so it's my understanding that the Steeston Park upgrade was put on hold until the siting of the new community center and library branch was um, decided. So if this goes through and goes through council, uh, will the Steeston Park upgrade be put back into the hopper then? Because I know it was uh, uh, much needed as well. It's such a well-used park. Uh, through the chair to Councilor McPhail, it's, it's Todd Grosser for Park Services. Uh, yes, uh, that is on our agenda following the outcome of today's uh, meeting. Well, that's great. That's good to hear. And, I, and I'm really glad we're going to be replacing the educational garden because it's really a much used uh, and well loved community space. And I really want to thank the building committee for all the work that they've done. It's been a long haul, and uh, we all appreciate their expertise and their wisdom in getting us to this point. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Liu. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, too, will be supporting this. I am really excited that this is coming forward. And I know, uh, being the council liaison to this Houston Community Society, how hard that they've been working on this. And also, I previously served as a library liaison, and I saw how hard the library board was working on this project as well. So thank you both to both of your groups for all of the hard work you've put on this. And also your patience on this. Certainly, um, we'd like to, to explore a lot of different ideas, a lot of uh, what ifs, a lot of uh, possibility here. So I think we're really going to have a good design that's really incorporating uh, the needs of the community and the direction of the community society of where you're wanting to go on this. And I, I really like where the situation of, of for in site three. I think it is going to be a good site. I think it will be a nice buffer against the neighbors to the east. And hopefully we'll be able to do something in that plaza area. Maybe we'll be able to incorporate some basketball courts in a way that so we're, they're mitigating the conflict with the neighbors because of the noise. Because I know that we they're very well used in other areas of town. And I know that we're underserved in this area of town for young people being able to do some of these sports that brings them together, like basketball. I, I know years ago we had a BMX track. Maybe we'll be able to have some space and put that somewhere else in our park. Um, and something that I'd really like to make sure that we're, we're getting in our plaza area uh, is obviously some seating, some shaded coverage, some rain coverage, but proper bike parking, proper bike parking where you can bring your chariot. So you've got your kids in your chariot, you're coming to the library, you've got some place big enough to put this, this unwieldy contraption that you're, you're bringing your family. We're really wanting to get people out of their cars and able to just come to the community center. And so we need to be, make sure we're, we're building it right so that they can do it and, and it's easy and that their things aren't going to be stolen or, or vandalized. And then we also want to make sure there's enough stroller parking inside of our community center. So when people are coming and, you know, they've got a wet stroller, they can still walk to the community center with their kids and, and enjoy the programs that are here. So just making making sure that we're building what it is we want and the way people want to live in season. Thank you. Councillor Al. Worship, I have a question to, to staff. Um, now, staff recommended Site C uh, for the new building. I think that makes lots of sense. But then uh, on GP62, staff talked about the parking option and actually they did have a recommendation. So they said that in the last, the third last paragraph, saying that staff recommended a combination of service parking and also some underground parking. Now, I wonder why this is not in the main recommendation. Is it going to be discussed for the time to or, you know, why, why is this not in the main recommendation today? Through the chair, the councillor, how, if I understand your question correctly, so we, during the recommendation, we recommended the third site, and with the third site, there are a lot of parameters that we need to consider. 
only one of the parameters is parking, hence it's within the body of the report. All we mention is that we need to do a combination of parking to actually serve the community center. And um, we, like, it is part of the project, but, but it's only one aspect of. Hence, in our recommendation, we ask for the siting, and, and from there we will determine the, where, where the parking, we will, um, I want to say, refine it as we go along with, with detailed design. Okay, so in other words, the parking options will come back later. Through, through, through the chair to Councillor Al, uh, we are actually recommending this type of parking where it's a combined between the two, and the number of stalls will, would possibly, I want to say, differ from, it could be 60, it could be 65, depending on, on, on how the building is, but, but basically we are asking you to, to approve th this approach that, that we are coming with, with this recommendation. Okay, so in that case, why don't we make it expected? Without the numbers, I agree that you know, the numbers could be, could be, could be adjusted. So why do we make it clear today that you know we also recommended this mixed model for parking? Through the chair to council, how that is council's direction. If that is council's direction, we will follow. I would, I would suggest that you know we, we make it clear, and you know I, I would like to make that recommendation. Well, isn't it on page fifty nine that that it's an integral part of site three? To the chair, that is correct. Yeah, but the, the main recommendation on page 53 is not clear on this. It doesn't talk about the site and the, and the manager, of course, but it's not explicit about the parking. So well, it can be obvious that in future well, just that, you know, we have an approved the option. With respect, Councillor Ao, site 3, if you look to page 59, it is in that as part of it. So... I mean, we don't say demolition of the existing center either. I mean, there's a number of things we don't say. That is what the program is under Site 3. So unless someone feels differently, uh, I don't think we need to add it because that's what it's going to be. But I'll go to other comments. Uh, Councillor Wolf. Uh, thank you. Uh, my comment is not about that. I have a few other ones and questions to staff. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll start on the last page of the report, page 82. That shows the, the image of uh, what it might look like. So I was uh, there yesterday in, in the rain for about an hour. And um, so my first question is that the new gymnasium that's shown there on the back, is it? it's a rectangular structure building, and it's, it's the, the length is from west to east, right? That's the longer part of the rectangle? Through the chair to council, if that is correct, that is that is basically the massing that we have at this moment. Okay, so, so could it be if we approved site three, could it be um, rotated ninety degrees and and run north south? Because in the back there is the field house and it's just pavement uh, leading up to the the field house, and that would allow it to be not um, coming into the mound where the trees are. Uh, if it could be altered that way, is that is that still possible if we approve site three? Through the chair to council, Wolf. While we're developing concept design, we will look at the possibility of of reorientation of the gymnasium. But the size—it's a double gym, and the size of it is significant, so it might impact the building. But we will take that under advisement, and we will look at within the concept design when we are developing it. We will look at it. The pictures that you see in front of you, or the illustrations, are basically the massing of the building. So it will not represent the form and character. We will come back to council with the form and character once we are when we complete concept, which will be the Q2 of 2021. Yeah, terrific. I, I, I know the next phase. I can imagine what it would look like when you come out of the community center and you see both gymnasiums on either side. But I, I'm I'm really quite uh, torn at, the, at this site only for the fact that that uh, north uh, east corner of the gymnasium is, is going to be quite detrimental on the park. Uh, so standing at the at the diamond, uh, I don't know if I, I still have it in me to, to hit it over the fence, um, but to have a, a brand new building, glass wall or, what, or whatever it might be, that close, um, it's also the, the shine off of buildings can have impact. Uh, um, Councillor Wolf. That, that happened. I've known Councillor Wolf. Because of their sighting. Councillor Wolf. You've been told that's simply to show the massing. We're going, to, just like we got for the lawn bowling today, form and character is the next step. It's coming back. Great. Thank you. And then, so the, the siting of this gymnasium is, is 
the concern because I've been to many other facilities. They're like, oh, we didn't think about the sun coming in at this angle or how close it would be to this other use of the space. And I'm, I'm really concerned about that corner of the gymnasium based on Site 3's location. Uh, and, and also, looking at it on this page as well, if the whole structure could just be moved further south, so still Site 3 location, but just tucked up closer to the to Moncton. Uh, I, 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 I know it's hard to see, and I'm kind of just done with a graphic computer program, um, but perhaps it will go all the way forward because I don't see the need for there to be parking right in front of it between Moncton and the building. Uh, that could be a walkway or a bike route, and that's it. And that would allow the whole thing, again, to shift south and get away from impacting the mound and the trees. Councillor Wolf, is that, is that, as well? that will be in the next report. Okay, great. Uh, well, staff just confirmed to me then that, that they are going to look at the orientation of the gym. That's great. Uh, and that this potentially could be moved forward and, and not impact the, the mound and the, and the trees. That's great. Um, the next one is impacting the, the community police office. And I know there's been some comments on it already. My, my question is, based on the site, that this is really the only site of the three that would impact the community police office. Um, so my, my question is, and, and there's concern on different um, types of community police offices or, and like it's referred to on page uh, 59, where it mentions it at the bottom of the page there, um, my, my concern is that uh, there's, uh, I'm not sure if it's clear, I'm just learning it myself, talking to, to some uh, officer in charge and such. So the community police office is different from a storefront, which typically just has volunteers and pamphlets. Uh, is that staff's um, awareness as well, that there, there are two different one that has extra structures that other operations from the police can, can happen inside, but they don't happen in a storefront? Uh, through the chair to uh, Councillor Wolf, this particular CPO operates as your standard uh, crime prevention base. Uh, it, uh, you could use the terminology storefront. You cut out. Mark, you cut out. Mark, you're muted. Mark, you're muted. Uh, through the chair, can can I? Am I? Yes, yes quickly, now? quickly now, Mark. We've got a long agenda to get through. Through the chair, uh, uh, to Councilor Wolf, this is a traditional uh, CPO, which crime prevention services will be provided. And then, uh, I'm not sure if you finished it, but it, the follow up on that, then uh, to the staff, um, is, is there not indication that we're looking for an, an actual? Um, community police no, office in Steve's we're not we're not on the community police office okay. we're on the the site selection for the community center please right focus on that yeah. and, and the, the reason for that if we're seeking out another location for a CPO then it would be okay to impact the site of that one there is having, no again, direction come up. there is no direction to that extent Great. I need. Mean, that's what I wanted to know before um, uh, I can uh, voice approval. Uh, finally, just two more items here. Um, the bus depot. Does staff know when the the potential bus depot across the street when when that decision is coming into place? Because that could impact site selection here. Through the chair to Councillor Wolf. I would refer to the Director of Transportation to Mr. B to answer the to to respond to that um, question. Lloyd, do we know where it's going to be and when? Um, which is that? That's the, um, Mr. Chair, that's the uh, bus mall? Yes. Are we talking about? Sorry, I missed the, yeah. Um, we are, we're going to bring forward a report in the, in the new year on that, uh, probably a little bit later in Q1. Do you okay, know where... to follow on that then to staff, should, is it worthy to approve the site selection without hearing what's, what's coming from the bus small decision? Uh, to your worship, uh, Councillor Wolf, um, we had not been looking at the um, Steveson Community Centre site um, for the bus small for some time since we brought it to Council and um, Council's direction was that it, you know, preferentially wasn't on that site. So there there are alternates that, that are available and um, I, don't, I don't think that um, the, that selection should um, uh, 
stop you from making this decision tonight. Oh, okay, I appreciate that. And just seeing how it was used in many of the pictures here as, as considered parking space, but it might not be available if that project uh, undergoes uh, quicker than maybe expected. Uh, my final question uh, about this site, so related to the table on table one on page 59 uh, and the new, new building, it doesn't matter which site, but um, they're all the same cost. So I'm just to clarify, last point here, um, does that new building cost, is it even if we build a high step code passive house or, or is that, or, is, or it, does the site actually dictate what um, level of other um, building envelope and, and all that, uh, how that factors in? Or is it regardless 59 million? Through the Chair to Council, we'll, we, we have looked at the, the Council adopted um, uh, high performance building policy and we, when we look at it, we look at it a lead gold certified and that is what council has directed us to do. The cost of the, of, uh, of the building, locating it at different sites on, on Steveston Park will not impact the cost of the building itself, but the ground densification could differ from one location to another. The site services, the, the proximity to Moncton, uh, allows site three to have closer to the main services where site one as an example is further away down that will increase the cost the cost of the building would stay the same so we are the our estimates are following the council adopted high performance building policy which is lead gold okay, okay thank you and I, I just misspoke i said uh, 59 million but it was it's 56 million off on all those options so thank you for all the clarifications all right councillor steves yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it's a great site. I think, in fact, I think the location is brilliant. I do have a, a couple of questions, but first, I would like to say I think that what it does is free, free up the area uh, for the buses that we wanted at, at, on our own property, where the old uh, BC Factors office was. Uh, it makes it a lot more convenient not having a community center across the street from it. So I think that actually improves the aspect of public transit. And I think that our, in our plans, and I'm not sure where this comes in, we should be designing this building so it depends more on public transit than on parking. The question I do have, however, is I mentioned 60 parking lots underground and 100 above ground. Can we not get more than 60 parking spaces underground in terms of the design of the building? To the Chair to Council Steves, it is possible, but that would increase the cost associated with it. The size going underground in, in Richmond will just increase vote. So for 60 stalls, we have um, done an estimated order of magnitude to reach the number that we have right now. If we increase the number of stalls underground, it will increase the cost. Okay, I'd like to see that figure when it comes back. Uh, the second question I have is when we built the library and the cultural center in, in the Mineral Park, oh, goodness, it was 20 or 30 years ago, uh, we ran out of money, and uh, we were going to, it was going to be a couple of stories taller, so they built the building so it could have two stories added. Um, I'm not sure, is this the place where we say how, how sturdy the building should be? Could we add two stories onto this building? Could we put a rooftop park on top of this building? Through the Chair of the Council, Steve, we had not anticipated adding additional floors to this building, nor any additional, uh, I want to say, f features on top. But if Council directs us to do so, we will have to increase, I want to say, the, the robustness of the foundation, which could increase cost. Because if, if we are building it for future, for future building or for future expansion, and we, that means we have to allow the foundations to be bigger and larger, and so it will add cost, Councilor. But when, so when do we discuss that? Is that the next discussion? Through the Chair to Councilor Steves, we, we basically have an approved program and we have not been told, so we have designed, I want to say we have estimated that there are no, if Council directs us to do so, we will have to consider it within our, within our design development. Well, I'd certainly love to see some options. Uh, the other thing, the last time we had a discussion, I, I was assuming that the building might go where the existing center is. And uh, I think we made a referral. We made, certainly asked you to consider looking at uh, reusing the old gym. I mean, have you given any thought to actually keeping the old gym? When they when they tore Lord Bing's school down, the small school, they said it was good for another hundred years. Just the school board just didn't want it. But the uh, construction from 50 or 60 or 70 years ago was so much superior than anything today that they, they typically last forever. So has staff considered uh, maintaining the existing gym for some other use? Or is that a future discussion? 
through the chair to uh, Councillor Steves, from a programmatic point of view, um, in order to accommodate the various uh, programs, in particular the martial arts uh, tournaments and uh, programs that are very important to the Steveston community, we actually need a contiguous 14,000 square foot footprint, and that was key to the development of this program. And so um, we really need to have that large footprint in one place and a con continuity of program all in one location. There oh, I agree with that. I I'm, I'm suggesting you may look at the gym and you have find some other use for a building that's probably structurally extremely well built. Through the chair to Councillor Steves, the, the the complication with that is is because we have allowed we have we have planned for removing the building and and adding parking. So if we have retained any part of the building, number one, it is I want to say it, it is an older building. Plus, we will have to find a solution for the parking. So that will that will add um, complications in, in planning and money, uh, adding additional cost to to the project, because our plan was to remove the existing community center and allow for parking. Okay, again, another problem I have, but I support the, the uh, overall location that you've chosen. Thanks. All right, uh, let's call the question then on the motion. All those, am I? No. All those in favor? Uh, those opposed? I'm not seeing anybody opposed. Is there anybody on the line? Harold, I'll take it you're in favor. Um, so it's carried. Um, and that does us uh, for the GP open. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. And I'll call to order.